So today is uh, the day after the Lord Nishringa Dev's appearance, and it's also a very holy day where there are many uh, celebrations centering around different appearances. But well, one such significant appearance is the appearance of Shishi Radha Ramanji, the beautiful and most uh, uh, most visited deity on all of Vrindavan. Shishi Radha Ramanji was established by Gopal Bhattagal Swami. And Bhattagal, Gopal Bhattagal Swami was one of the six Goswamis that met Lord Chaitanya when Lord Chaitanya was visiting South India and he stopped at the Rangam Temple. Uh, the Lord stayed in the house of, Go, uh, of, of, uh, of Venkata Bhatta, the father of, uh, of Gopal Bhatta. And Gopal Bhatta was just a little boy at the time. He became very attached to Lord Chaitanya as a little boy and did a lot of personal service for him. And then he wanted to leave with the Lord, but it wasn't possible. He was still a little boy and still part of the very big part of the family. But the Lord told him that soon, when, when your parents leave the planet and you can join me. So that was many years later, he came and joined. And uh, he was one of the six Goswamis in Vrindavan. He, um, unlike the rest of the uh, Goswamis, he didn't have a uh, Krishna deity. <laughs> he uh, he would he would. Uh, Gopal Bhatta one, one time received a dream and it's in that dream the Lord appeared to him and said if you want to wash want to have my darshan make a trip to Nepal upon re leaving for Nepal Gopal Bhatta entered the famous Kali Gandaki river which was a place where there were many shilas. It's one of the areas in the world where the Lord appears in his shila form. Um, upon dipping into his into water, he had a little basket with him. And he see, or, and actually it was a pot. He saw that the uh, pot was filled with many, many different shilas. He poured it back into the river, but as soon as he did, again, the pot filled up with different shilas. This happened three times, and each time different shilas would come into his pot. This third time, he saw there were 12 shilas. Then he understood it was the mercy of the Lord. So he kept those shilas and returned to Vrindavan. 
He used to worship those shilas and he would carry them in a piece of cloth tied at the corner. One day, a very wealthy man, his name was Seth, and he had come with ornaments, clothing, and various paraphernalia for a deity, and he offered them to Gopal Bhatta. Gopal Bhatta was very impressed by this man. However, he couldn't use all these clothing and ornaments because all he had was his shell of grand shilas. But he, so he said, well, why don't you just give these ornaments to someone else? But Mr. Seth insisted he keep them. Gopal Bhatta kept these shalagrams in his, I mean, all the clothing in his cloth. And uh, Gopal Bhatta one day was absorbed. And actually, it was uh, the appearance day of Lord Nishringadev. He was worshiping Lord Nishringadev. And he said, he started to pray to the Lord, feeling very lamentable. He said, you are very merciful and you always fulfill desires of your devotee. Um, he said, I wish to serve you in your form, having arms and legs. And he said, if I, if I was able to do, do that, and I could decorate you so nicely with all these beautiful clothes and ornaments that was given to me. In the evening, after offering some boga to his shila, Gopal Bhatta put them to rest, covering them in their basket, and he took rest. Early the next morning, he took his bath in Jamuna, returning on to his, after his bath, he saw amongst the, the uh, shallograms, there was one that was no longer a shallogram, it was actually a deity, a Krishna deity playing the flute. Now there, was, now there were 11 shilas in this particular deity. And this particular deity was the Damodar shila. He had mess manifested in a beautiful threefold bending form. Gopal Bhatta fell to the ground in ecstasy and started to uh, exhibit various ex symptoms of happiness. This, uh, this wonderful event happened the day after Lord Nishringa Dave. That day, we are, on that day, we often usually offer 500 liters of milk for the Lord's pleasure and many other sweets. The Raman, the Radharaman temple was the standard of deity worship. When Rupa and Sanatan Goswami heard about the uh, amazing events, they came running to see the Lord. Seeing the Lord's beautiful form, they exhibited ecstasy by shedding tears of joy. And this was the appearance of Sri Sri Radharamanji. He made his appearance in the year Vaishakya 1542. Sri Sri Radha Raman never leaves Vrindavan. <laughs> He's still worshipped there near the Niduban temple. Well, the Radharani is not personally present there, but it is explained that she is there in her unmanifested form on the uh, left side of uh, Sri Radharaman. So that's a beautiful pastime. There's a very unfortunate event that happened many hundreds of years later where one of the children of one of the Savatas in the, in the uh, 
temple was playing with the deity for some reason. And he had a little small stick and he pushed it into the ear of the deity. And it came out the other side. And however, the stick had blood on it. That very day, that same boy died vomiting blood. <laughs> Hmm. I'm sure devotees, many devotees have had the opportunity to go to Vrindavan. And we always go to the Sri Radharamanji temple there in Vrindavan. Well, this is today is the appearance of Shishi Radharaman. Um, and of course, uh, when he appeared, then Gopal Bhatta started to worship him very gorgeously and nicely. And, and I think from my own experience, seeing the different deities of Vrindavan, Radharaman is the most festival of all deities. There's so many festivals centered around Radharaman. Practically, there's almost a festival every day. There's one book that was published by the devotees who take care of Radharaman in Sri Vrindavan at the present day. The book is called Krishna. It's a very big book. And in that book, it describes festival after festival which is a yearly event going on to worship Shishi Radha Ramanji. He's a favorite, famous, favorite deity of so many devotees all around the world. People, devotees keep pictures of Radha Raman in their, on their altars or in their homes in one form or another. And devotees always look forward that when we visit Vrindavan, you go right to the Radharaman temple. In the year 1996, one of the Sevayas, uh, Padmanad Goswami, started to travel around the world. And he uh, came to the Chicago temple where I was presently residing. And we met, and then he started to give classes at the temple. And it was a pleasure to meet him. And he was telling me many, many stories about Radha Raman. And he, I also received a copy of that book on the glories of Radha Raman's festival throughout the year. And he traveled to many other temples around the world in his tour. And later on, I met him and his son in London. And that was about 25 years ago. I mean, no, I'm sorry, that was around the year 1998 or 99, I believe it was in 99, I think it was, in 1999. And so um, they take the glories of Sri Sri Radha Raman everywhere and preach it. So today we can remember his appearance and how he showed special mercy to his pure devotee Gopal by appearing to him in his personal form. And it says there are three principal deities of Vrindavan. There are Govindaji, there is Madan Mohan, and there is Gopinath. Shri Govinda, Gopinatha, Madan Mohan. These three deities are the three principal deities in the Sri Vrindavan Dham. Manifestation of Sri Radha Raman indicates these three deities in one. As it's explained, um, Radha Ramanji has the feet of Madan. He has the chest of Govindaji. And he has the face of Gopinath. So he appeared to exhibit and illustrate three of the other deities in their outstanding characteristics. 
So this is a little bit about C.C. Radha Ramanji. Today is also the appearance day of Srinivas Acharya. Srinivas Acharya was uh, a contemporary of Lord Chaitanya. He appeared after Lord Chaitanya disappeared. Not long after. I think actually he appeared towards the end of Lord Chaitanya's Leela. I'm not exactly sure. But um, how he was born was quite interesting. Srinivasacharya, uh, Naratam Das Dakor, and Shamananda Pandit were three of the great souls that used to associate and travel together. And there's a beautiful story how they traveled together, distributing the books of the Goswamis. And that story of Srinivas Acharya is quite an amazing story. Um, he, his home was in Janjigram. When Lord Chaitanya went to Katma and uh, had taken Sanyasi. He, uh, his father, um, Gangadas Bhattacharya, came, just happened to come to Katwa at the same time Lord Chaitanya had uh, come and was receiving sannyas. So he was there for that ceremony. He didn't expect it, but it happened. When he saw the Lord and he saw the ceremony, he became so much absorbed in Lord Chaitanya that after hearing his name given to him by Keshava Bharti, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, uh, he couldn't stop chanting that name. He continued to chant wherever he went, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. After some time, he returned home, still very much affected by the apparent, by seeing the ceremony of Lord Chaitanya accepting sannyas, that he explained it to his wife, who became quite amazed. At the time, both of them didn't have any children, and they didn't want to have any children. So one night, this was after he returned from Katwa, both him and his wife had the same dream and in that dream, there was an indication that they should begin a family. So they both woke up and exchanged the dream to each other, which was the exact same dream. And they understood this was the divine mercy of the Lord. Later on, a beautiful son was born named Srinivas, who later became Srinivas Acharya who along with Naratam Das Thakur performed many, many. Srinivas Acharya was quite a, a personality. He wanted to uh, learn Srimad Bhagavatam. And it was told that the only person he could learn Srimad Bhagavatam or the person he should learn Bhagavatam was from Gadadhar Pandit. Lord Chaitanya had just left the planet and Gadadhar Pandit was just continuing his life by worshiping the deity given to him by Lord Chaitanya. And that was the, uh, his deity in uh, Tota Gopinath in, in Jagannath Puri. So in that particular worship, um, Gadadhar Pandit was feeling much separation and didn't know how long he would be able to maintain his life after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left. Srinivas Acharya had come and Gopal Bhatta was happy to meet this great soul. And then he requested him to teach him Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, Gadadhar Pandit was very happy to and, and uh, honored to teach such a great personality. But as he was trying to teach him, 
um, he noticed that his book, the Srimad Bhagavatam, the ink was unreadable because after Lord Chaitanya left, when he would read Bhagavatam, he would simply cry and that would blur all the ink on the pages. So it became impossible. So he took his book and he gave it to Srinivas and he said, take this back to the scribes in Navadvi and recopy it and come back and uh, I'll teach you. But while he was gone, Gadadhar Pandit left the planet. When, he re when, when Srinivas returned and learned that Gadadhar Pandit left the planet, he was overwhelmed with lamentation. But then he was told, you can go to Vrindavan, Sanatan and Rupa Goswami are there and they will give you shelter and teach you. So his enthusiasm renewed, he headed for Vrindavan. And on his way to Vrindavan, when he appeared in Vrindavan, it was in, in the evening time and there was like a ceremony going on. And everybody, and he asked, what is this ceremony? He said, well, actually, you know, we have gotten word that Sarupa and Sanatana Goswami have both disappeared from the planet. His hopes again dashed, he fell unconscious. And when he woke up, he would just happen to be in the association of Jiva Goswami. So Jiva Goswami took him under his care and taught him Srimad Bhagavatam. And then he stayed and learned under Jiva Goswami. Later, there was also two other persons that happened to be there in Vrindavan. That was Shamananda Pandit and uh, Goswami. And Jiva Goswami's desire was to distribute the books of the Goswamis everywhere. But, but in order to do that, they had to have the books recopied or made many, many copies of. There was only one copy of the many of the main books, Rupa Goswami's Ujwala Nilamani, uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami's Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, Hari Bhakti Vilas by Sanatan Goswami, Priha Bhagavatam Rita by Sanatan Goswami, and uh, many of the other books. And so there was a program to take the one copy of the books and go to Navadweep to have the books recopied. Navadweep was the center of, of transcendental knowledge and literature at the time. So the books were loaded into a big box and locked up, put onto a bullock cart. And the three Goswamis, along with 11 guards, took, started to head towards Navadweep. Um, as they were going through the different places, everything seemed fine. Soon they were coming to one place called Vana Vishnupur. And there was one king there, his name was Birhambir, Birhambir. And he was, a, although he was a, King, he uh, was a dacoit. And uh, well, he would always observe who was coming through the kingdom. And if he saw that someone was rich, he would have astrologers inform him of travelers coming through the kingdom. And if somebody was rich, he would arrange for them to be plundered for all of all their riches. So he got the message that some travelers were coming with a great treasure. And so he sent his men out to plunder them, but he gave the instructions, don't cause them any harm on this particular case, which was diff different than what he had said previously. As the groups were traveling, they stopped one night in the kingdom. And they went to sleep. Now the guards were supposed to stay awake all night to guard the books. But this night, all the guards fell asleep also. And so that 
And so when the thieves came, there was no problem. They simply took the, book or the books away. I'm having a little internet trouble here again. Just one minute. Okay. And after stealing all the, the box of books, it was easy. Nobody was there to guard. And when the devotees woke up the next morning, they realized the books were gone. And everybody was in total anxiety. Srinivas and Tarya thought about what to do. And then he heard a voice coming from the unmanifested ether and said, the king has stolen the books. <laughs> no one else heard it except Srinivas. So Srinivas, he talked to Shamananda and Naratam. He told Naratam, you go on to Ketri Gram and you preach there. Shamananda, you go to Utkala, you preach there. I'll meet you later. Uh, I'm going to try and stay and find the books. And so, uh, they went, and then Srinivas went, and he uh, wound up at the king's palace. And one day, there was a, it was actually a regular affair where the, the pundits in the, under the king would come together every day and sit and discuss various transcendental literature. Although this king was a dacoy, he still liked the scriptures. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so they were discussing Bhagavatam that day, and Trinivas decided to sit in and listen. And as he was listening, he could understand they didn't know Bhagavatam. <laughs> Their explanations weren't very suitable or very correct. So he indicated, and they questioned him, well, if you th think you know more, let us hear your explanation. So he did, and after explaining, they were all amazed. And the king, when the king heard about it, he called to Srinivas, and he said, you should stay here and become the chief of all my pundits. So Srinivas did that. And after some time, the king said to him, you know, you, you sacrificed your own time and traveling, I'd like to give you something. Is there something I can give you? Srinivas said, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm looking for uh, a treasure that I lost. And he explained the whole situation, how his the books were stolen. The king said, oh, I have the books. <laughs> and he brought them over and showed, and all the books were still there. And uh, the interesting thing about this situation is that when the books were packed, the Chaitanya Charitamrita was put on the bottom. But when they opened the uh, box, when the king had it, the CC, the Chaitanya Charitamrita was on the top. If you put milk in a place and you leave it alone for some time, you see that the cream within the milk comes to the top and settles itself there. And so in the same way, Chaitanya Charitamrita is the cream of all Vedic literatures. <laughs> and now the books, and then after staying there for some time and preaching, the king actually became attracted to devotional service. And he asked Srinivasacharya to please give him initiation. And he did. So the king actually became a Vaishnava. And being a very influential king, he ordered everyone in the kingdom to become Vaishnavas. So that entire kingdom became Vaishnavas under uh, King Birhambir, who was now a Vaishnava. And so this is a little bit about the life of Srinivasacharya. Of course, later on, he met Naratam Das Thakur in the famous Ketri Gram Festival, which was... This was 50, 50 years after the disappearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when the Vaishnavas from Rindavan, from Navadweep, 
from Jagannath Puri all came together to celebrate Lord Chaitanya's disappearance. And there was a grand festival. Srinivas Acharya was the, along with Naratam Das Thakur, had organized the festival. Mostly it was Naratam Das Thakur, because Ketri Gram was actually the home of Naratam Das Thakur. And that's a beautiful, beautiful story how the devotees came together and celebrated for three full days a grand festival. And during that time, there was a kirtan led by Naratam Das Thakur. And in that kirtan, as is described, Naratam was leading with a small pair of cartels. And behind him were 14 Murdangas and many other devotees playing cartels. I think there was four, uh, no, I'm sorry, there were 14 cartel players, seven Murdanga players, and Naratam Das Thakur. When Naratam Das Thakur was absorbed in the kirtan, kirtan started to increase in volume and in enthusiasm. Finally, the kirtan reached such a crescendo that everyone was dancing and dancing and dancing and chanting and feeling the ecstasy as Naratam continually absorbed in the holy name. As the ecstasy increased, some a miraculous event happened. Everyone saw it. Lord Chaitanya and the entire Panchatattva, along with many of the associates of Lord Chaitanya who had already disappeared from the planet, all appeared personally in the kirtan and started to dance. When everyone saw that, because many of the persons who were in the kirtan saw that these some of these people were their relatives. Uh, uh, Achyutananda saw his father, uh, Uh, Sri Advaita Acharya and uh, Raghunanda Thakur saw so his father, also Mukunda. So a lot of the relatives and friends of the devotees who had left the, the planet were now returned with Lord Chaitanya in that kirtan. It wasn't a, it wasn't a mystical experience. They all personally appeared physically in the kirtan and started to dance. When the Lord came with the many of his associates, the kirtan reached such a, a height of ecstasy that it became completely mad. Uh, Lord Chaitanya's kirtans are called Prem Kirtan. <laughs> it's not just kirtan, it is Prem Kirtan. And so the ecstasy spilled over in such a way that people were un even unable to, to continue the chant. They were just rolling on the ground crying seeing Lord Chaitanya dancing in ecstasy along with many of his associates. This went on for some time, Naratam Das Thakur, although seeing the whole scene was, did not break his kirtan. He continued to chant in a, in, in a beautiful way. Can the kirtan just can, can continue to go on for hours. Finally, after some time, many hours later, right in the midst of the kirtan and the height of the ecstasy, Lord Chaitanya, along with all his disciples who automatically appeared, automatically they all disappeared. When that happened, the lamentation reached such a height that <laughs> it's undescribable, as is described in the Shastras by uh, Nityananda Das and a few others who described this episode in detail. Uh, it's not possible to describe what happened during that time. Janava Devi was also there during that time. And she was considered to be the leader of all the Vaishnavas. She was the grandmother of every, of course, Janava Devi was the wife of Lord Nityananda. And she had come to serve the devotees there and help to organize the festival. She was put in charge of the cooking. And under her were many, many dozens and dozens of cooks she supervised. And during that time, especially the day of that kirtan, a grand feast was, was uh, cooked and distributed. And there were um, 22 persons serving the devotees as hundreds and hundreds of devotees lined up for prashadam. As the prashadam was being served, Janava Devi, although she was the head cook and the supervisor of the whole kitchen, took part in the serving also. 
And then her and 22 of her assistants served every, all the devotees so nicely. And at the end, when everyone was served, then all of these servers sat down in Janavi Devi and one or two others helped to serve the servers. Finally, everyone encouraged her, please take prashad. And she was the last one to take prashad. She just wanted to serve all the Vaishnavas. And it's explained that the, that the prashadam was so tasty, it felt like it was coming directly from the heavenly planets. So, and, and people were eating and eating and couldn't get enough of it. Um, there's a certain characteristics about transcendental prashadam that it's like the holy name. It's because it's Krishna in, in the form of transcendental food, it is unlimited also. So there are elements of prashadam, or you might say, categories of prashadam that are so transcendental. Prashadam is transcendental, but again, the bhakti that's put into the cooking manifests such a quality of prashadam that one can never stop eating. We had that, I had that personal experience when I was in Jagannath Puri in the year 2006, along with uh, many senior devotees. Bhakti Churu Maharaj was there. Uh, Deva Amrit Swami was there, uh, Sachi Nandana Maharaj was there, Radhana Swami was there, Pankajangri and Janani Vas was there, along with Indra Jumna Maharaj. And uh, we had the good fortune to get Jagannath Prashadam right from Jagannath's plate. Uh, Radhana Swami had no, knew of some of the pundits who were serving in the temple, and they arranged for us to get directly Jagannath Prashadam. And I could honestly say, as a personal experience, when we were taking that Prashadam, the more we would eat, the better it would get. <laughs> and we would continue to eat and eat and eat. And it was like, it was like a bottomless pit. We were just eating Prashadam, that's all. <laughs> it wasn't stopping. And we never, of course, at one point, we, we stopped, but it went on for a long time. We ate much more than we would normally eat in a regular meal. This prashadam was so, what we say, celestial, <laughs> so transcendental. So when, during this Ketari Gram festival, when Janavi Devi cooked, that was the same experience. Everyone was eating more and more and more, and they were all smiling and laughing and enjoying the prashadam so much that it was like a kirtan itself, <laughs> such ecstasy of happiness in eating transcendental prashadam. And of course, after three days, everyone dispersed to their respective yatras and went back in Janava Devi. She traveled there back to, <clears throat> to Navadvip Dham. So that's a little bit about the life of Srinivasacharya. Um, Srinivasacharya was very, very intimately connected with um, uh, one disciple whose name was Ramachandra uh, Kaviraj. Uh, Ramachandra Kaviraj took shelter of Srinivasacharya. Later, Srinivasacharya gave Ramachandra Kaviraj, his disciple, to be the main associate of Naratam Das Thakur. And it says Naratam Das Thakur and Ramachandra Kaviraj were so close, they were like two souls within one body. And Naratam Das, in his song, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Doya Gora Bora, in that song, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu. Doya Gora Mode Toma Bina Kedayalu Jagat Sam Sahare. The very last line, Haha Prabhu Shriya Shriacharya Prabhu Srinivas Ramachandra Sangha Mage Narotama Das. In the last line, Narotama. 
the Anartam glorifies Ramachandra and Srinivasacharya in that last line. They were very closely connected together. And actually, when Srinivasacharya left the planet, Narottam Das Thakur found it impossible to maintain his existence. And three weeks later, he also disappeared. But when Srinivasacharya left the planet and news was received by Narottam, Narottam went into Nirjan Bhajan. He went into seclusion and he wasn't seen for three weeks. And then later on, he disappeared. And that, that story of Narottam Das Thakura has he disappeared is so beautiful because he disappeared twice. <laughs> the first time was an interesting experience and that uh, people were criticizing him after he left and he and by the prayers of his followers, he came back just to prove that he wasn't an ordinary person and the, critic, the critics became transformed and actually became his devotees. He stayed for a little while longer, but then again, in a couple of weeks later, he also disappeared, finally. And that's a beautiful, beautiful story. So this is a little bit about Srinivasacharya. Today is also the appearance day of Madhavendra Puri. And Madhavendra Puri, that's a whole beautiful story of the life of Madhavendra Puri, how he established the Gopal Didi in, in um, where is it? Can't remember the name of the place, but uh, it's in Gujarat. <laughs> and that famous deity there is known as Giri, Go Giri Govardhan. And that's a very, very wonderful story on how Madhavendra Puri traveled all the way up to Ramuna um, on behalf of his deity. Uh, met the Gopinath Didi, Shirakura Gopinath. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj got disconnected. Hare Krishna. Are you still able to hear me? Okay, thank you, Lavanya. I'm sorry it's not able for me to. Um, if you write your questions in the chat, then I can answer your questions. Otherwise, I'm not able to hear you. <laughs> Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Um, please, uh, if you have any questions, please write on the chat. Um. Let's see. Uh, you can uh, you can display the chat. Maybe I can display it also. Okay. Any questions? Okay.
or comments if you want to comment on any of these personalities or something related to their pastimes. Hare Krishna. I'm away from my regular place of giving the class. And so this may be one of the reasons why we're having such difficulty. How do we clar this is from Sri Devi, how do we qualify ourselves to worship Sheila's? Um, well, it says generally Sheila's are mostly worshipped by householder devotees. Uh, but there are devotees who have Sheila's and travel with Sheila's. I know for, for a fact that Gopal Krishna Maharaj travels, when he travels, he travels with many Sheilas. And there are other devotees, Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj also has many, many Sheilas and worships. Um, I would, I would say, in order to really understand, if you actually seriously, with all sincerity, and with all devotion, want to worship the Krishna in that shila, I would suggest you pray and sincerely pray, and then simply wait and see how if Krishna comes to you in that form or not. I would say that is the best way to understand. And Yeah, I know my connection is really, really bad here. And we're just hanging on here by Krishna's mercy somehow. <laughs> so anyway, uh, if there's no more questions, I think maybe we can just end here. Tomorrow we should be in good shape with everything back up to full force. And we'll continue with speaking about the glories of the great souls. So thank you very much. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Well, yes, tomorrow class is at 2.20 p.m. UK time. And this is uh, from Srimad Bhagavatam, 5th Canto, 6th chapter, verse number 16. 5, 6, 16 tomorrow for our connection with the devotees from Charlotte. 5, 6, 16. Okay, we will see you tomorrow. Thank you very much.